But actually, Tyler Williams says, as a Chelsea fan, I'm worried a big signing will interrupt the flow. Is that a risk or not? No, it, well, it depends who it is, don't it? I think that Frank alluded to it there. I think it's very important now, Chelsea, you've, it's been great news. The club can spend money. I've no doubt every agent in the world who's got an half decent player has been on the phone to Chelsea trying to, trying to make a quick buck. But where the club is now, where the structure of the team, where everything's flowing right now, that's old saying you have to bring in someone who's better than what you've got. There's not many out there that are better than what they got, you know. So unless you're getting a top, top player who can come straight into the eleven and make an impact, just leave it. I would just leave it. If you can get them in now, the price is right, and they're going to make. Is the price ever effort. right in January? It's not the best. That's what time, I mean. You're going to you're going to pay a premium on whoever you pay. Like, say for instance, player. Like, let's just say Chilwell's been linked for the club. He's, he's not going to want to leave, Leicester's not going to want to leave, unless it's an extortionate amount of money, and Chelsea are not going to want to pay that, and rightly so. So, you, you know, it's all timing. I, I think, personally, unless some, something falls on their lap where they can get a player who's going to clearly make the eleven better, uh, just leave it and go with what you've got. I think Chelsea are doing a, gr they're doing a great job. I think they'll safely be in the top four. What do they need to make the eleven better? Um, I think definitely they can improve in the goalkeeper mistakes. Uh, I think the young goalkeeper who's come in uh, has not completely convinced me. I think his attitude has been in question, uh, mm. obviously, last season. Um, and there's no one really pushing him. It's Caballero, 38, uh, behind him, who's been brought on or been tried to be brought on for penalty's sake. Um, <laughs> But other than that, I, do, I, I don't think he... He reminds me in some ways of when David De Gea... Different, I do think a different league, but when David De Gea first came to Man United, his physical sort of prowess was mm. in question and he's l literally grown into that position. Uh, but I don't think he quite has the composure. Um, he makes some big saves, but then isn't kind of... Hasn't 100% convinced me. So get some pressure and, and, on him. By and I think some pressure in, on yeah. him. Bring in, you know, like like at Liverpool brought in Adrian. I thought yeah. that was such a, you know, an excellent signing because it's proven when he's had to come in, he's got that experience, he's got that composure, and that you know bleeds very easily to your back line and beyond. Yeah, I wouldn't argue with Rachel's expertise on goalkeepers, but I think they need a left back. I think they need a centre half, and I think they need a centre forward. And I think if they got them three... You think you need them now to guarantee themselves top four? Well, what I think they do need now, I think they've exceeded expectations from, from the start of the season till now. I think, you know, nobody expected Chelsea to be in the position that they are, both in the Champions League and the, and the Premier League. But I just think that they, they just look like they're getting a little bit tired. They're getting a little bit, not stagnant, but, you know, they're just plateauing a little bit. And mm. sometimes if, you know... The players know that there's a transfer ban. They know that nobody else can come in and compete for their place. They've got themselves to where they are. This is me now. I'm in the team. But you know, sometimes just a, a signing in, in January just makes everybody just go, hang on, hang on a minute, I'm going to have to raise my game again. It kicks me on another level. And sometimes that can be a big thing. Now, whether they go through all of those three targets in one transfer window, I doubt it. I think he's looking for... The following season as well, he's earned the right to plan long term, like they did with Pulisic, bringing him in in January and having him really, you know, playing out of his skin at the moment. So, I think they're the positions they'll be yeah. looking at, and I think um, whether they bring in one in January to raise the club and look for the others for to, for the rest of the season. It's going to be interesting, isn't it? Because suddenly you've got to see. Is Petr Cech good enough as director of football to bring in the right yeah. players? Does Frank get frustrated if he wants players and doesn't get them? Do the young lads who've come in and played well get undermined by more yeah. experienced players coming in? It's in such a settled ship. This is going to be really interesting. Well, well, well this is it. Like the bit, like Big Pete now. Is, 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 is the first. <laughs> this is his job now. He's got to go out and sell the club. He's got to go out to them top top players, yeah. identify and work with a scouting department underneath him. Go and get the players in that are right for. for one thing I would say is there'll be a, there'll be a discussion. Amongst all the people, the board, the board, whoever's in the, that department, the scouting, Peter Cech, Frank, the one person who's the most important person in that room is Frank. You must give Frank the players he wants, and if he, if you don't, don't give him a player that he, he, he sort of likes, mm -hmm. he might do well. Frank has to be one that's convinced of it because he's the one that's going to work with him and make that play. The one thing that Lamps has shown, he's shown 
he can improve players. Yeah. You know, and not just Frank, his coaching staff. They, they, they're improving players on the job, winning games. It's very tough to do He's that. He's also been forced to work with players that he knows don't fit in his system. To those players, it's plainly obvious they don't fit into his system, but he can't let them go because he can't replace them and bring anybody else in. And that, that has not been an easy part of the job, again, that he's had to deal with, and that problem goes. But I think mm. bringing Frank in was the perfect person to solve that problem. And for me, it's been really refreshing seeing Chelsea work with what they've got. So many times we've heard the stats of, you know, 30-odd professional players being out on loan at clubs and they've had to reel those players mm. in and work with those players and mould them into what is proving to be a highly successful team this season, a team that's been very competitive. Um, but they will need a little bit of freshening up, uh, you know, as the season moves along. But, you know, that's been refreshing, I think, talking about board level and all the people who make the decisions on what the strategy is moving forward. I think having had this experience forced on them mm. might actually change what they think is their strategy moving forward. Whether they find people within the club, players coming through or go out um, and sign people in, as Joe said, the most important is that Frank Lampard is, is the one that wants them. I think clubs in general throughout world football are just getting sucked into mm. you know, going along with the director of football or whatever his role is, his choice in players. He's not managing them every yeah. day. The manager has to truly believe in whoever you're bringing to the club.